everyone, today we're going to look at the 2016 National 5 Graphic Communication Paper. We're going to skip to question 3 because this is the first CAD modelling question. Cone is a portable container for storing earphones and other cable accessories. The lid was modelled using 3D CAD modelling software. Describe with reference to correct dimensions and 3D CAD modelling techniques how the lid can be produced. You must use the drawing provided in the supplementary sheet for use with question 3a. You may use sketches to support your answer. This is a six mark question. This is a supplementary sheet that is provided for question 3. Um, it says the orthographic drawing for the lid is shown below. Now what we've got is an elevation plan and the elevation is also sectioned. So you can see what the model actually is going to look like on the left hand side. Um, you can see that there's a range of dimensions given, there's heights, there's lengths, there's diameters. You just need to be able to pick out the correct dimensions um, when you are going to sketch it. If you're looking at how to pick out the given sizes, remember we're going to create a revolve for this um, object. I believe that this would be the most simple way to create it. So we want to be starting thinking about the instead of using a diameter, using a radius. So it's about how do you convert those diameters into radius and where about is your center line going to be. The first thing I would do for creating this object as a CAD model descriptive question, we'd be looking at what's the first profile that I need to have. So I've said previously, I would use a revolve command to create this object. Therefore, I need to have half of the profile. It's important that when you create the profile, you have included every dimension possible that you're going to need for that sketch and additionally labelling which line is going to become your axis. Now this is highlighted in kind of green pen as a centre line, I've labelled it as an axis. Just be careful when you go to work out each of your dimensions that you have not accidentally recorded a a diameter instead of the radius because remember we're looking for half of the diameter. It's important that your dimensions are easy to read. Your profile that you've sketched is proportional, roughly accurate, does not need to be exact sizes. This is the level of detail you would need to include for the first profile and for the first step. All the written information I've put in is sketch the profile shown below and dimension to the given sizes. This is enough to achieve two marks because we're looking for a mark for the shape of the profile and a mark for the dimensions. The next step for this CAD model plan is to revolve the profile we've just created. I note that we've not created the angled section on the revolve so far so don't be alarmed if you practice this on Inventor and it doesn't look exactly what we're looking for. It's important to make sure that you're saying that you're using the revolve command, you are revolving at 360 degrees around the axis shown. So at this point it's important that you have labelled the axis in a previous part of your sketches. In step 3 we're looking to remove the section of the cylindrical shape that we have created previously with the revolve tool. Now it's important that we create a new work plane simply because it makes things a little bit easier for us um, when we're going to do the extrude subtract. You could however sketch on the current work plane that runs vertically through the centre of the object that you have just made and extrude subtracting but going symmetrically either side. If however you have not set up your first sketch on that work plane things start getting a little bit messy, therefore it's better if you can create your own work plane um, on the, a, tangent, a tangent point of the shape that we're going for. So on the screen you'll see that we've got the green line, that would be indicating the kind of central work plane that we've already got through the origin that would be on your model tree. And the lighter green line to the left hand side is your new offset work plane. Now we can be very exact and offset it by 38 millimetres, that is the diameter of the, sorry it's the radius of the bigger circle. However, you could make it further, further away 
and just make sure that you extrude subtract further. Next thing that I'll be looking to do would be to sketch the profile of the extruded section we're going to remove. Now it's important that the sketch that you draw lines up with each of the corners but you could draw it larger to make sure that you're getting rid of any of the additional area. So the first thing you want to do is draw your line along the top surface where the 76 um, dimension is and make sure it connects to the left and right point of this. We're then going to create a vertical line down 30 millimetres and then where the 76 millimetre line starts and the 30 millimetre line ends, we're going to join that up to create a right angled triangle. This would be drawn on our new offset um, work plane that you had created previously and that's just shown with a kind of bigger green box around the outside. Remember the work plane will not be exactly the same shape or size as your object that you're currently drawing. Once we've created the profile for the removed section on the cone, we want to go to the next step, so it'll be step 5. You want to simply select extrude, make sure you change it to say extrude subtract and select your new profile and extrude subtract by 76 millimetres. This should then give you the cone shape with the angled profile removed. Finally, step 6, we need to make sure our object has been hauled out correctly. You can see this from the section that's shown in the supplementary sheet. To do this, we need to select the bottom surface, which is the smallest diameter circle, and select that surface to shell. When you are using the shell command, we need to make sure that we are setting the wall thickness to 3 millimeters. This is the final step and should give you the object that you're looking for fully modelled. This is the overview of my model plan for this question that I've shown you. Now it's important to note that I spent a great deal of time on this to make sure that it was all laid out and it was easy for you guys to understand. Now the important thing to remember is you do not need to make yours look like an absolute masterpiece when you're in an exam or a prelim, but it's important that it's clear and has the level of detail that we are looking for. Here what I'm going to show you is where each of the marks are awarded and hopefully it's clear to follow. So the first mark that we are going to get awarded is in step one when we are creating the profile. So obviously you're not getting the mark for saying the word profile but it's actually creating this profile in here. The second mark is given for the dimensions and making sure that all of your dimensions are accurate and in the correct position. Okay, so step one, pretty much two marks. Step two, we've got revolve 360 degrees around the axis shown. Again, you get the mark for saying that you're going to use the revolve. The fourth mark you're going to get is for sketching the profile. So this part here and making sure that the dimensions are correct. So this one's a bit of a sneaky one. You only get one mark for this part, simply because the sketch that you're having to create is very simplistic. Um, Technically, step three doesn't need to happen, but for me, it just makes me more aware of how I'm going to create the sketch and whereabouts it's going to go so that I can use my extrude subtract, subtract in step five. Moving on to step five, we get one mark for extrude subtract. Remember, you need to make sure that you're saying subtract and your, diam your distance, I've got 76, depends where you put your profile. The final mark comes from using the shell command. So we need to have that we're using shell and we also need to say that we're setting the wall thickness to three millimeters to get one mark here. So there we have it. We get two marks for step one, a mark for step two, a mark for kind of three and four combined, a mark for step five and a mark for step six. This is obviously not the only way that we can create this um, object but for me this is the most simplistic way and the way that my brain works.